Why from New York? It's Ask an Engineers. Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome Hi, to another awesome Ask an Engineers. Today we again have two engineers. Look at it, we've had like two engineers like four weeks in a row now. We had Waz yeah. and we had, who did we have? We have um, Kip and then we yeah. had somebody else too. Yeah, I'm, I'm installing a revolving door on the front of Adafruit. We've got so much. Uh, this is a magnet. Well, we actually, have, we actually right have space now. We can actually have engineers over. Yeah. Um, joining us this week is uh, Mike Esty, Mike my Esty. friend, for one of the people I've known long, forever. I don't remember too much 12, besides 10 years ago. 13 yeah. years. I know nothing there. before that. I and he brought me chocolate. And uh, um, mm. Mike, you're, you're visiting from uh, San Francisco? Yes. And uh, we'll do a quick little intro. Uh, Land of cold brew coffee. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what do you do? Uh, I do a lot of things. Uh, it'll probably take a while. Um, but mostly I build robots, um, flying some robots that make other things. Uh, Flying robots, robots that make other things. Uh, I've worked on some inflatable robots that inflatable walk around. Robots. People might know um, the company you work for, which is? Uh, I work for a little research lab in the mission, and we're in an old pipe organ factory. It's called Other Lab. Other Lab. So the um, inflatable, uh, like walking elephants, I think that's, we posted these up on The on, uh, on ant roach. Before. This the combination of an anteater <laughs> and a cockroach. You guys yeah. are totally going to make these like hydraulic soft bots now. Bouncy yeah. castles, walking, yeah. walking bouncy castles. Walking That's bouncy castles. Yeah, I, I, I predict a Burning Man project. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're, we're gonna something? get to Mike's project. He has a he really has a cool um, uh, cutting bot, I guess you know, but it's cutting all bot. it's gonna uh, make some really neat things out of chocolate. And then also, uh, you did a really cool flora project. A lot of people um, may also know your work. We posted about it on the Adafruit blog. Um, you've taken the flora and done some cool stuff with it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get my jacket. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're going to uh, start to do the show. Um, let me uh, pay okay. some bills here. Let's start uh, out. The code is one year pie. One year pie. Ten percent off all things in Native Fruit Store, including all the Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, it's uh, it's a, it's someone's birthday. Well, it's something's birthday. It's an Efforts birthday. Uh, raspberry Pi. One year old. Wow. Since launched. Uh, one million units. It seems like it was launched yesterday. Yeah. Um, it was one year ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do those guys uh, get a break now? No. No, they were here last week, and uh, we'll actually talk a little bit yeah. about that in the show. Evan, unless we're visiting, and they, uh, one of the things they said is they wish they'd waited two weeks and they could re have released it on March 14th. Which yeah. Is and let's get uh, oh. Mike a little closer Sorry. here, and uh, All right, that way the mic picks him up. Here. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So yeah, on tonight's show we'll be talking about the show and tell. We'll be probably. Talking about Mike, some of his projects. Some news, maybe we might get a little chatty. Mailbag, Time Travel Tuesday. Some news from the world of open source hardware. The Adafruit Learning System. Arduino. War of a Wednesday with an amazing, awesome video. Everyone knows him, Colin. They Colin. Will see it. Him in action, Becky's project. Big group effort from Adafruit. This is a really cool project. 3D Thursday, Pi Day. New products. We answer your questions. We'll have a trivia question. We'll have a robot demo. We need, a, we need a, an icon for a robot demo. Okay. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. All right. <coughs> let's, um, let's, just, uh, let's just dig in here. Um, okay. Let's go through the show and tell. All yeah, three sure. of us can go through this. Uh, Chris Young had an awesome um, project that... So Chris was on the site pre uh, previously. He has made remote controls that control remote controls. To help him operate things yeah, a little the, easier, the better. Yeah, because the buttons on the remote control are so small that he can't operate them, so we made a really big remote control with big yeah. buttons yeah, that he can easily control. A remote control that remote does rem that re controls remote controls. And then this time, he uh, took the Leonardo, and um, it, it has HID, so you can use it as a keyboard and mouse. And he uses drag and dictate to control things on the screen. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, funny enough, uh, dragon doesn't do mouse dragon very well. Yeah. So he used that to control the mouse better. Yeah. Um, really cool project. We'll, uh, the, po the, the link to the video is, um, uh, Becky just posted up in the chat room and we'll also post it up. Uh, next up, Carl has the one of the only Linux microscopes. Mi is Arduino that? microscopes. Arduino. <laughs> it's an Arduino-like microscope, laser microscope. Laser microscope. Yeah. So, I mean, eventually, like, um, you know, CERN is just going to be... The, the the big collider is going to be our Arduino powered. Yeah. Or Probably. maybe or maybe a they pie. might have a couple of Arduinos yeah, in there. Yeah. They might use a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might use a Raspberry Pi since it's a, you know. Just tile the inside. But maybe I'll use both. You can use both. Um, maybe I'll use a propeller because you know multiple cores, all that stuff. Um, 
Uh, Matthew had his soft robot project that everyone knows that just come across. Bot. First they're moving and then they're going to walk. We yeah. What they're gonna do after Which that. Which is awesome. I mean, I just think it's cool because he's he kind of approaches things from like it's half special effects, half engineering. So it's like. I want him to do a face hugger. You could use a face hugger. You know, there's gonna be a face hugger next. Um, Joe Murphy has a, a off-the-shelf co- cold brew coffee maker that you can just get 3D printed parts from, like yeah, and mason jars. I like that because it's like you know to make a, the cold brew stuff. It's like you have to make have a, an arrangement, but instead of having like special blown glass and like a filter holder, it just has a 3D printed thing. Screws two mason I really jars like together. Really like the combination of like combining like already yeah. made materials and 3D printed something things, simple like, them into the, that's 3D printed more, yeah. Yeah. combined with something complicated, but that's off the shelf. Yeah, uh, Ethan, uh, we've been following his project. He's been checking in. Um, he did a live demo, the first ever on Google Plus Hangouts that I know of. It was Tesla Coil. Tesla Coil. Yeah. In his uh, garage, and his par- I heard his parents in the background, and people were there. They did a live demo. Party. This was incredible. Yeah. This is, this is crazy. And uh, Ethan's 15. Yeah. And I hear his house is still there, too. The house is still there. I was, I was a little worried. You know, it's funny. He's like, well, uh, we, I have to do it outside, but it's in Seattle, so it's raining, so you have to wait for the week. So, uh, amazing project. This yeah, is, this, cool. is, this is fantastic. Um, Mark has this uh, great uh, kind of DIY time lapse. Yeah, he made a time lapse. That uh, and he, I think he did he Maker time-lapse, Fair. Uh, first. Uh, first, first sorry. New Hampshire. And then I think Maker Fair is coming up, right? Is that? Yeah, it's from the Yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, he, had, and, he had a tripod. And, and then the whole thing. Michael from Willow Garage showed up. Um, we played Maker Charades because the robot arm was fine. But the mic on the on the camera. I think wasn't. the robot probably. The robot just like beep. Yeah. yeah. The robot, okay. Yeah. 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 And so it's like a eight. Six degree of freedom. I think it was eight. Eight, eight or six or plus, a whatever. Six plus. Six plus. Um, plus. Counterbalance, brass machined, uh, robot arm. Mm. Yeah. It's sexy. Yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty amazing. And uh, and he wheeled it out and showed it. So uh, if you go on YouTube.com, com slash Adafruit, the show and tell is probably already posted up right now, um, if you want to check that out. Uh, Steve, continuing on his uh, Kidtronics, I guess we'll call it. Better parenting through Arduino. Yeah, yeah, better parenting through Arduino. Steve had previously made a little uh, Arduino um, project using our enclosure and Arduino stuff that his uh, kid will know when it's okay to wake up the parents. Because uh, like three-year-old can't tell time. Yeah, three-year-old can see a, color, though. And it uses an RGB green. LCD, so there's text. But there's also the background turns green or red, so it's like it's an indicator beyond just text because the kids are too young to read, mm-hmm. yeah. and they can use the LEDs. But, but then as they get older, they can start reading with the text. And as soon as they're old enough to program, they can just hack it to shorten their length. Yeah, yeah. and hack so the, the new one is an alert box because one of the kids doesn't want the other kids coming oh, into yeah. the room. So uh, I said, you know, it's a kind of a fun time we're approaching where maybe in the future parenting is a GitHub repo, <laughs> and you just kind of download the firmware updates to your your Kidtronic device. And help you parent. You gotta push your chores list. Yeah. So do a pull request. Yeah, pull request for yeah. your chores. Uh, and then last up, um, we were just kidding. We said, hey, paint your dragon. Can you show us what you work on? And he puts on a uh, the 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 uh, pupil. Uh, it's called, I think, uh, Google it's an eye tracker. It's an eye tracker. Yeah. yeah. It's on uh, this this project that we're working on okay. that, that they're working on. Um, and it's uh, really neat. And he showed this beautiful uh, shape wave printed uh, headgear. Yeah, um, it took like two two already built boards that you get, and then you print yeah. out the headset. I'm starting to see there. a couple projects that do that where they have the electronics. They'll sell the electronics, and you get the you just order the enclosure, the assembly from Shapeways, and so they they figure out ways to like <clears throat> you can actually have a full product where mm-hmm. like. How long before your television like, comes as a bunch of parts, and then you like print the case? But for like if you're doing ones of like 15 or 20, mm-hmm. you know yeah. you don't have to keep inventory. Yep. So um, fantastic show and tell. Nine people, mm-hmm. not including us. Um, the, the show and tell might need to. That's actually the maximum number of people we're gonna. The have. show and tell might need to go longer. It's getting that big, that good, and uh, we're sending out stickers. Um, stickers. Speaking of. If you have been. All participants on show and tell will receive that. you know show and tell sticker. Please send your email to sportdata.com. You'll get a show and tell sticker. Uh, and we send these worldwide. And you get multiple ones. Yeah. There is some kid who has like ten. Although we had our request, we're gonna get multiple ones. Like maybe have one request for like six stickers instead of like six yeah. requests for one sticker. Whatever. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. You okay? Okay. Yeah. This is a lot of so okay. to send. Yeah, I have to send these out, so it's okay. okay. Um, well, the, and the, sometimes I send to the shipping team. They have a whole, they have a little container room. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? It's really easy. Go to our Google Plus page. It's at plus.google.com/slash plus symbol Adafruit. Look for the post where I say, "Hey, post here," and we will add you to the circle, and then post there, and we'll add you to the circle, and then any week in the future, you'll be able to show up on the show and tell. 
Uh, so do it now, and then next week you can show up, the week after that, or the week after that. We have like 250 people. Uh, be one of them. Show up yeah. the project. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually my favorite part of Ask an Engineer. Aww. It is, because everybody can show their projects from around the world, Yeah. and we get to see them face to face. Yeah. And it's neat. Um, we've been doing this for over a year now. Easily. And, so, and some projects we watch from start to finish. Yeah. And uh, with Ethan, with his... Uh, Testicle, I think like one week he's like, oh yeah, here's like a, a giant tube. And it's like, okay. And then like, you know, a year later or whatever, here's this uh, project that's yeah. finished. And you can share it with everybody and it automatically uploads to, to YouTube. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you were talking to the president before that, um, when we had to talk to Google, they said that we had one of the most most content, one of the yeah. most content playlists of uh, show and tell. And um, we sent a link, it's like 56 hours. So wow. if you ever wanted to just sit home and kind of watch Maker Fair, like come to you, like have the flu, <laughs> yeah, just hit hit play on the playlist. Lots of chantels to see. Uh, lines. Yeah. All right. So uh, Mike, you're up. I took a screenshot of your site. This is your site. It's MikeSD.com, right? Has your portfolio of stuff. You do all sorts of stuff. And then do a lot of things. Other lab. And this is where I work. And this is where you work. So we're gonna, let's just go right to the demos because we'll run out of time if we don't. Um, what what did you uh, what did you bring? Uh, so I brought this um, little machine with me, and I didn't design this machine. Um, a coworker okay. of mine did. It was pretty awesome. So They're not here, so you get all the credit. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm gonna go shout out to uh, Jonathan <laughs> Ward, uh, who also works with me at Other Lab, where we design machines. And uh, I wrote the control interface for it, and he designed the hardware. Uh, but it's a it's a miniature milling machine, and you it's. Take that camera. Yeah, do you oh, want yeah, yeah. to, uh, can you move it onto here, or is that not? Uh, no, I think we're going to wheel it. To, maybe we yeah. should wheel it right in front of uh, here, and then we'll take this camera. Okay. All right, everyone. Live, live camera demoing. Yeah, so what I thought we would do is take this camera. Yeah. And then. Uh, okay. No, 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 all right. this, this is good. Yeah, well, okay. but right. we also want to kind of get into the, I will, uh, the guts of this here. I will uh, okay. point the camera. So, Mike, just make sure you speak loud, because our mic's up here. Okay. And, uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so this is this is a really small milling machine, and like it was small enough that I was able to take it with me on the plane. I had to check it. I don't think it was going to make it into the carry-on luggage. Um, but it's it's designed to mill PCB boards, and I made this like little flora uh, little ex flora accessory, and this is one of the vibrating motors yeah. uh, for haptic uh, input. But I got a piece of chocolate on here. And, um, yeah. All right, so this is uh, Mike's milling robot, and uh, he milled out a, a Flora PCB with, that has a little haptic sensor. Yeah. Um, we can show that later. And then right now we're inside the machine. Um, yeah, I want to show this. And uh, I want to be able to see from the top. Let's yeah. See cut some chocolate. So now it's time to cut some chocolate. Oh my god. Okay. I want to go back a little bit more so I can focus. This might be the first. No, this is definitely the first live chocolate. What am I thinking? It might be. Like, what else? I don't know if anybody who else, else has been live chocolate, streaming yeah. chocolate carving? I, I'm, I'm just trying to help you get your chocolate back there, so I know you've been dreaming. Yeah, I know, right? Every Adafruit order has a chocolate bar, and if yours carved has the right carving, you can visit the Adafruit factory. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Can you move the the bed? Yeah. So it turns out that affixing chocolate is really difficult, like if you're a machinist or anything. Um, but yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that, an Adafruit logo. Oh, it's not focusing very well. Yeah, this camera. There we go. Look at that. Ooh, Adafruit yeah. brand chocolate. Mm. Yeah, so I have this thing. I don't like to slop our logo on everything. <laughs> However, food stuff is totally okay because you eat it. I do want to show that you should talk about this construction because I think this construction is really interesting. Yeah, so this is um, this is from Jonathan's Inventions, and it's called MTM Snap, uh, Snap and it's from Machines That Make Things. And uh, it's this is, a, this is a precision milling machine that you assemble with a hammer. I really love that. Like you put the pieces together and lock them into place, and they're basically like um, they're the same clip locks that you would have on your uh, like a bike bike messenger bag. Um, uh, I forget what they're called. Just like little slide locks. Yeah. So and what is this made? What is this machined out of? What is this uh, material? It's made, machined out of basically milk carton. It's a plastic called HDPE. Uh, it's food safe. And um, it's pretty inexpensive, and it's recyclable, uh, which is why we like it. We're all about recycling. It stuff. does have kind of a milk carton type feel. <laughs> it's got a bit of milk flavor too. Yeah, like, I didn't do milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Machine very yeah. Well, 
chocolate. What's the best chocolate to milk, Mike? Uh, <laughs> as you the probably want like a resident, milk chocolate. No, like a dark chocolate, right? Like no, yeah, dark chocolate. Like something with a really hard temper to it. Like it should really? snap. Yeah. Oh, I thought so high, it high, could be stupid. Otherwise, you know, it would be... High chocolate yeah, content. Milk, yeah, milk chocolate will just gum up your flutes uh, and you'll end okay. up with a, a gooey uh, mess of chocolate. Okay. Um, and then here's the spindle. Yeah, and the spindle uses a, basically a quadcopter motor. Um, you know, it's a little overpowered, but yeah, uh, this lets it run at a really, really high RPM, which you need for very small the, flutes. The motor connects to, this, the spindle connects to the motor here, so yep. you have a little belt. And then what is this guy here? Uh, this is the Z-axis stepper, and it's called a can stack uh, stepper. I don't know why, probably because it looks like a can. Uh, and that drives the, the uh, Z-axis up and down. Yeah. And then this is the uh, the spinder. There's a little coupler here. It's a self-centering shaft coupler. Uh, uh, it's really it's important to keep things to. concentric when they're ro rotating at high speeds. We'll just shatter the bit. Um, not want to and and how long have you been working on uh, this? Would you say? Uh, to... Oh man, uh, Jonathan's been designing machines like this for a very very long time. Uh, but it took him about two weeks to design this. Two weeks to design it. But uh, it's based off of an existing. It's, it's based off of previous things that he's done in the past. And this is this is his baby. I actually stole it uh, to bring it to New York. I was like, I'm going to show your machine off. He's like, yeah. I want to build PCBs. Um, and then here's the electronics that drives it. Yeah, so that's the that's a four-axis Tiny G controller, which is this really nice G-code uh, interpreter that lets you stream G-code to a machine. And like, if you're designing machines, it's really, really wonderful to work with. It's like four axis, can handle most uh, NEMA 24 and lower, sorry, 23 and lower uh, uh, motor sizes. And you get a power supply. You get a power supply. Runs up to 12 volts, I'm assuming. Oh, oh someone wants to know the dimensions because we're very close into it. Maybe oh, yeah. we can... Uh, there's a, there's a... Uh, let's get it uh, scaled to a person. Actual size. Yeah, so it's very small. Like this is, I would say, I mean, a this foot, is a one a foot by one one, 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 maybe. Oh, it's uh, more than one foot. Ten inches by oh, ten inches by twelve. Okay. Okay. So this is twelve. Ten. Ten. By ten. I think it's smaller than my my next cube I used to have. <laughs> it's actually very similar. Yeah. It's, it's a close in size. Yeah. This is great. All right, and then um, do you want to? Uh, we'll switch back to the main camera here. Okay. Come back. Oh, wait, let's look. Let's um, let's uh, take oh, a quick look at yeah. the PCB. Oh yeah. Maybe uh, pull in here, Mike, and tell, talk to us about this uh, PCB. Focus, focus. Uh, so there's no uh, vibe sensor on. Uh, so that was cut out on this machine. There's no vibe sensor on the Adafruit. Uh, sorry, output on the Adafruit store, and I wanted to make one to sew into my jacket here, uh, which I'm wearing. And um, like haptic stuff is really good if you're building wear wearable projects when you need to like you know notice an event happening. Yeah. It's really like you're not going to notice a blinking light most yeah. of the time so if you're like, walking around. Everybody else. Will as you get to your, close to your destination, maybe it yeah. vibrates more. So yeah. so this so you you have this PCB and it you can tell it cuts out the outline of yeah, what the you want. Yeah. So and then this is the kerf that you get from the bit you have. Yeah. Yeah. And then it also drills the holes. Yep. So you get the holes at the same time. And so from start to finish, I probably spent about 15 minutes designing the board in Eagle, mm -hmm. uh, and then about um, five minutes to eh, 20 minutes doing the CAM processing to generate the G-code, and then I can drop it into the mill, and it cuts out in under a minute. OK, let's um, switch the other camera. Yeah, sure. Just cause okay. That's a board. OK, yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Um, I'm going to ask some questions that other people are going to ask, and I'll just I'll just get get it yeah. over with. So, what um, resolution can you do with this printer? Like, is it like 12 mil traces? Like, what usually we say, like 12 mil, 12 mil spacing? So the the difficulty comes with the bit size. The smaller the uh, smaller a Thank bit you, you have. Thank you for positioning us. <laughs> Look, I don't have the I don't have that Willow Garage robot that'll come in and <laughs> arrange you guys. Okay? okay, working on it. All right. Uh, the smaller the the smaller Michael you make email the bit, me. <laughs> uh, the, the faster the spindle has to turn, and the yeah. slower you have to go, and the less you have to take off. Okay. So that's the limit. The machine has a... So big bits can take more faster off, and so you can mill a board faster, but if you want precision, you have to slow it down a lot. You have lot. to slow everything down and speed the spindle up. Okay. Uh, and that's just because the, the size of the cutter gets very, very small. And then you're also more likely less. to break it? And you're 
really going to break some. Yeah. It's kind of inevitable. You're moving uh, microns at a time okay. as you come down under the surface. So what, what's what's the goal for like, you know, um, you said you designed this so the bed is the same size as the Free Eagle? Uh, yes. Uh, so this, this machine is specifically designed uh, to work make with chocolate. Eagle software and not make chocolate. Mm. Uh, Solid wants to make, work, make chocolate. Carp chocolate. Mm. Carp chocolate. Uh, but it's designed to work with eagles, so if you just need a, like sometimes you need a board that fits in a particular case and you want to do a little custom job, mm -hmm. or you know, everybody's had this problem who just designed their boards before. Uh, it's designed to like work with the free version of eagles, so it's just the bed size is just that big. Yeah, it's like four uh, by six. Yeah, it's four by six. Okay. Um, Inches. And Jonathan designed it because he likes making guitar pedals, and uh, the world of guitar pedals has always been through hole. And the problem mm. now is, is that these guys that design these things, they're not able to find mm. a lot of the parts because people don't make through-hole parts anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so now when they put these boards together, now they have to contend with surface mount stuff and you know, sometimes you don't want to send the board out. Mm -hmm. And so he's really into doing this. And the other fun thing is, is it's actually uh, sized enough that you can mill out uh, common stock box uh, cases as well too. Yeah. So oh, it can do, okay. You know, again, not very so you fast. A, you put a big bit on there. You put a large bit, and then and you can then go through can, aluminum. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't go very fast because it's not a rigid machine, uh, but it doesn't need to if you're just doing little one-offs. And I think it's interesting because it's it is you know it's it's this print it's it's this cutter the CNC cutter but it also can go up and down just a little yeah, bit like yeah. one inch. He gave it like uh, he gave it a good clearance. There's like enough to change the bit and to like get over the top of something interesting. Yeah, because you have to like go down and back up, mm -hmm. and also like yeah, account for warping and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, how many PCBs have you milled on this on this so far? Uh, three. Okay. There. Could you um, have this mill out its own driver board, electronic driver board? Do you think that's yeah, that's that'd possible. Be kind of cool. Ooh, that's totally possible. Machine making machines. Ooh, everyone loves machines making yeah. machines. Mm, dangerous. Um, so this is kind of interesting. And then uh, another question is, could you like attach other stuff to it? Like, let's say I wanted to put a pen on it, would that be something I could do? Absolutely. I mean, not spinning, obviously. Yeah, you'd have to change the head out. We're not going to design it to be an interchangeable head because mm -hmm. we want to make it work, do its one thing and do it yeah, yeah. well. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, the very first thing that I did with it was to cut a profile of the, sorry, to cut a topographical map of San Francisco into a mm -hmm. piece of plastic. Okay. That was the first test. It was like, all right, what well, can you do? So you can do some basic, in, you know, topographical. It can do, yeah, yeah, it can do high resolution 2.5D uh, milling in a, uh, one and a half inch by four inch by six inch uh, volume cut okay. volume. Okay, not so bad. So I, I have a couple questions because I know people are going to ask the same thing. So um, you said it can move up and down a little bit. Yes. Okay. Could you potentially have it uh, with a little uh, suction nozzle and use it as a pick and place, a little tiny little? <laughs> Got, gotta ask. Gotta ask. I, Could you? I have thought of that. Okay. Yes. All right. Very, very slow. <laughs> right? No. Well, but, but, it you, could. but it could, right? So pick and places are a really cool uh, CNC machine. They're one of the um, few CNC machines that uses optical coupling uh, to get high precision. A lot of most machines use, um, uh, they use uh, feedback closed loop control at the motors, whereas a... Uh, no, it has, to use, it has to use optical. In fact, it's interesting because we were um, just talking to the, about the pick and place we we're going to buy, and the pick and place we're thinking of buying can do a 105. So like basically like dust, right? Yeah, I know. And the problem is it's it's actually not that it's the pick. I mean you have to do these special nozzles and everything, but the, actually the problem is is it's hard to pick it up from the feeder because the feeder doesn't have the precision. Yeah. So as the tape comes through, they, you wouldn't like, want to pay for the precision of the feeder either. Yeah, you don't want to pay for the precision of the feeder. So so what they do is actually I think they actually use feed uh, they use visual feedback at the feeder, not just at the placement. Mm -hmm. So they actually go the, you know goes to the feeder and then finds where the hell is microscopic little capacitor is. It has to it rotate it just right yeah, yeah. and drop it in place. Yeah, so it's, it is, yeah, I'm not doing okay. one of those. I've got more questions. So are you considering making these and selling these? Yes. Oh, okay. Ooh. Um, so yeah, announcing here, uh, we're looking to launch a company to... What is this machine called? <laughs> we have to have a name for it. Uh -huh. Milk Bot. <laughs> Uh, ostensibly, the company that we're thinking about starting is called Other Fab. Okay, so this is the Other Fab from PCB Lab. Other Lab. From Other Lab. There's a relationship there. And uh, this machine is called, at the moment, it's called the Other Mill. Other Mill, okay. It mills yeah. other things. Other Fab, Other Mill. Yeah. yeah, their line of talking robots will be Other Gab. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. It's the only thing I can get to the <clears throat> alphabet. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is interesting. Uh, so you're so, going to sell this? And yeah. we're looking to have a test run of these available sometime in the vicinity of Maker Faire in, in May? like May-ish. Wow. 
But, so you, you're yeah. hoping to have a booth and you'll show this off there and yes. people might be able to pick one up? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, advanced alpha beta test. Uh, advanced alpha yeah. beta test. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, still a lot of software work so to do. Do you want people to contact you if they're really, really interested in this? Uh, yeah. If this is something that's interesting to you, uh, you can contact me at uh, Mike at OtherLab. Okay. Uh, dot com. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. If you know. want, um, we can uh, also do a post on Adafruit if you want to take any photos and say, hey, what do you guys think? Once they're ready, I'll, I'll yeah. shout it from the mountains. Yeah. Um, this is exciting because um, I've known you for a really long time, and you're um, uh, you're very humble, so I get to say really nice things about you, and you'll be, oh, shucks. But uh, Mike's like one of the best programmers. Like, you used to work at Apple. Um, you didn't say that in your intro here, so you were at Apple. And then when I met Mike, he was doing... In the good old days. He was, I, <laughs> I met him a million years ago, like at, in the Jurassic period of the Internet. Um, you know, there, there was all these different creatures, and one of them was Flash. When Flash <laughs> roamed the yeah. web. <laughs> yeah, Flash was really big because there was so much oxygen in the atmosphere. Um, but uh, uh, Mike worked on vector graphics for cable boxes. It was Excited Home, and I was writing books and software that made data-driven vector graphics for uh, banks. <laughs> Let me see if I can remember this. Uh, Multi-resolutional, scalable vector interfaces that used Flash as the rendering engine through OpenGL. Yes. Yeah. It, it was weird. I think you've, it was super I, weird. I think I convinced you to write a chapter about this in the book or something. I don't know. That's but it was so, I miss, that was cool. It was so weird at the time because we were putting vector graphics, like designers and, and, and programmers putting vector graphics on television. And it was so weird to go and do a talk and be like, okay, let's turn on the TV and here's here's the future. You know what a television looks like now? It looks like a computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turns out um, we should just wait it. <laughs> uh, no one had set top box. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Moving on. Set top box interfaces haven't changed. No. They're... We've changed. They haven't. <laughs> they're so. exactly where we left them. Um, and then this yeah. is not the only um, CNC robot that you're working on. You're also working on another ro robot, right? Uh, yeah. The other robot that we're working on is called the Other Cutter, and it's a four-axis roll-fed. Uh, high-speed vibrating knife cutter, and it can it cut through fabric and stuff like yes. pattern making. Yeah, it can oh. cut through fabric, uh, foam core. If you're doing arch uh, architecture stuff, it can cut through felt, um, uh, thin plastics, including ones that lasers can't do. Like pet and stuff. <laughs> yeah, pet and things like that. Um, and it was uh, originally designed for the education market, and we're still working on it and trying to get it reliable. Like it works, and when it works, it works beautifully. But and so it's a little bit like a programmable scroll saw. It is. It's actually like a programmable X-Acto knife stabber. Okay. So like it's like a small child that just really. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the other X-Acto knife stabber. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be audience advocate because uh, I, I come up with weird things. So why don't we see an other cutter on wheels that uses something like a, um, uh, 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 an optical mouse technology? So you don't have to worry about the bed size. The robot runs around and cuts instead of. The material you or the hold it down. so there's a, but it could be very heavy. So there's a really awesome but if it's project. Exact, if it's exact knife, you don't. It's okay. There's a really awesome project that's one of the few uh, CNC machines uh, that I've seen that is a uh, coupled with a person. So it uses a person to close the coarse grain control loop. I've seen this. Yeah, I know what, you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's also one of the few CNC machines that is uh, smaller than the things that it makes. This doesn't happen very often, um, and it's this router made by. Um, I forget what his name, but it's a it's a router it's with an on the Adafruit blog. We, it's on the yeah, Adafruit there's blog. A, there's a video about this. It's a router that lets you cut out, you know, very fine grain stuff. Um, I do like guides you along. I yeah. do like the idea of using a person's feedback because first of all, people, they, I think people do like to be involved. Like I mean, for like manufacturing, of course they want to automate it, but like for most like home stuff, people don't mind being mm -hmm. involved. They just can't personally do the precision stuff. But using yeah. like I mean like a human visual mechanical. Feedback loop is, is very good. We're very good at that stuff. And if you magnify something enough, like you know, humans can do like 0.4 millimeter um, yeah, pitch soldering. Pretty, pretty if you have if you have a microscope, you can do it. Like the mm -hmm. the feedback loop for, the, for our muscles is, is quite good, and we're not very fast. So I do I do think that's kind of an interesting approach. Where and also there's somebody who did something with um, laser cutter with these a laser beam. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah to draw yeah, that. The, and I like I like these because it's it. Um, 
it kind of makes the software intuitive. It has this in, in, intuitiveness for the software because it's like, oh, well, I just want to draw and it just follows. Yeah, it. a huge part of the work that um, that we do at Other Lab is trying to make the experience, the, the part between you have an idea and a design and you want to get the machine to make it. You want to talk about handmade. Getting robots to do anything is a handmade process. Yeah, yeah there's very little automatic about it. You them. have to tune it by hand. Yeah, you have to, to tune, tune it by hand. And so a lot of the work that we do is uh, trying to make the experience of interacting with a machine that makes the thing just as smooth as possible, and like get away all of the G yeah. code and all of the like calibration. And it reminds me a little bit about like possible. like um, using computers in general, which is, luckily has has moved a little bit better. But it used to be if you wanted the computer to do anything, and still a little bit, you have to like program it in like arcane languages. Mm -hmm. It's and the just, fourth R. Yeah, programming. It's, it's hard. So. Um, you know, figuring out a way, if, if anybody who figures out how to skip that, like I think like um, what was cool is like, you know, graphic design software, like um, like even in, even some 3D software, mm -hmm. the ones that have figured out how to make it so that it's not just like, I'm typing yeah. command, and there's, there's open scan, people love it, and like you want to type in commands, I understand that, but like, it, 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 it scares off a lot of people. Who I think a don't huge know reason that laser cutters are so popular and the reason that people build flat pack, uh, you know, constructions out of them is because a laser cutter you design by making two-dimensional things, right? And if you want to you mill something, which is a very high precision process that can produce you know, very complicated parts, you have to spend an enormous amount of time generating the motion paths and like tuning them and like breaking parts and like getting it just so. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, you know, that's why people like 3D printers if you want to make complicated parts. It's because yeah. you don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Like they don't go very fast and they don't produce parts that are really all that accurate compared yeah. to a mill. But, but you do but you do but you do get what you yeah. you, you kind of design. Yeah, which is you, neat. it's a lot closer and you, you know, there's yeah. a lot less learning that has to happen. Yeah, one of the things you know, Thingiverse was is, is really neat because you can kind of see the models. Mm -hmm. One of the things you don't get to see when you do robotics is like what your robot is going to do once you program it. There's mm -hmm. no there's no like video there's no thing that you can kind of see what's gonna happen. Um, the software that you showed me, though, mm -hmm. is really interesting because I saw that you spun around. Oh, okay, I'm not supposed to see that. Never mind. I didn't see any software. You can describe it. The oh, okay. software that we imagined. The, so the software that you were showing was amazing, mm -hmm. and I think that is one of the missing pieces. Um, if you were to put a price tag on a machine like this, do you have any idea of what, uh, what ballpark it is? I am aiming to make these things for what I like to call less than a thousand. Less than a thousand. I think once it's less than a thousand, there's Many more people have access to your yeah. machine. Like, you know, milling machines are floating like in in like <laughs> kit form. They're floating around 700 to 800. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can get uh, miniature manual mills for about 700 to 800. Yeah. Sands yeah. tooling and everything else you need. But yeah. uh, this one's specifically going to be purpose built and very carefully designed yeah. for PCB work. I like that this is built around kind of someone's problem. It's just like, look, I like to make gu these guitar pedal things. We get all these problems because th there's a market for that already, mm -hmm. and and you can satisfy that market build a business around it, but there's so many other uses for it. Yeah, at Other Lab, we don't believe that there's going to be one machine that like solves everybody's problems. We think there's going to be a lot of very low-cost, small, bespoke machines that yeah. solve very specific problems in interesting yeah. ways. And like, there's one thing that I want to like really point out, and um, all of, a lot of these machines that you see out there, what you get when it comes out of the box is like, you now have a license to spend an enormous amount of time learning out how about how to make the machine go. Yeah. Uh, and like even on the 3D printer, which you know gets rid of most of the machining problems that you're going to run into with like a mill or a lathe or anything else. Uh, you know, the p thing I tell people is that don't ask yourself, do you want to spend your time printing out parts? The real question is like, how much time do you want to spend in CAD designing things? Because yeah. that's where you're going to spend all your time. Yeah. Like you have a you have a vision in your head and you want to like make that go. Well, yeah. now you're going to have to learn all of this CAD software, and you're going to have to learn how to design things. You're going to have to learn yeah. how to like describe three-dimensional shapes. Yeah. I think that's where the future is, is like figuring out how to describe things in your head and getting a machine to do it. Because yeah. right now, it's really hard, even it with is. a 3D printer. It is. I, I still feel like we're kind of stuck in, like, we as humans have to learn to think like computers as opposed to computers kind of meeting us halfway. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's some negotiations that have <laughs> to happen because it's really hard. It's like, if you really want to do something, better learn a computer programming language is great, but it is it is hard. And we see efforts like Scratch and like some other things and some CAD software starting to like make it easier. But um, again, uh, what I saw was very interesting over there. Thanks. There's a, like, a, yeah. All right, so we're going to try to burn through some like stuff here. Um, uh, print, out, print out a seat.
seatbelt. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, right, let's this. yeah, we're gonna go through this uh, real quick. Uh, the code is one year pie. Ten percent off everything in the Adafruit store. It's crazy. Everything in stock. Um, okay. Because we're celebrating one year of pie. We'll get to that in just one minute. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's run really fast. Let's run really fast. Okay. First up, there's some events coming up. Disrupt. Hardware disrupt. Yeah. Hardware, hardware disrupt. TechCrunch was here talking to you. Um, hardware. Um, you've probably noticed a change. Um, Hardware's hot. It's all about hardware. Hardware's hard and it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up, um, Adafruit is a sponsor of PyCon. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we really like Python as a programming language. Yeah. Um, so when, beautiful. When you talked to the president, um, you said if every kid can learn a computer programming language, it would transform the company. And we were talking about get, Python. I didn't get to actually mention Python. We were just talking about Python. And, uh, well, anyone who Googled afterwards knew um, we have a web IDE. It teaches Look, Python. Look, even MIT moved from uh, you know, Scheme to mm -hmm. Python. I have done Objective C, C, Pascal, HyperTalk. Um, HyperCard. It's hyper, yeah, oh my god. So many programming languages, and Python is my favorite. It's lingo? Just, do you remember Lingo? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep moving. All right. Um, yeah, also, AppleScript? AppleScript. Oh. Yeah. Um, All right, next up. Get this pipe ba uh, Python yeah, badge. Yeah, um, we have, we, have, we um, got permission. We have a Python badge. Um, it's there. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, the uh, Adafruit. YouTube channel needs your help. We can get nominated for this channel thing where they um, uh, let people know that we're an up and coming channel. Yeah. Um, check out the site. Becky will probably post a link in the chat. And go for it. Um, well, you just have to fill out a thing and say, okay. oh, this is a good channel. I like it because they do education. I like it because they do these things. Um, this is very helpful for us. So please look into it and please fill out the form. It only takes a second. Um, next up, mailbag. I'm just going to summarize it. Oh, by the way, Mike, can you say this? Isn't this cute? Oh, let's pack it in the mailbag. Yeah. Pretty soon he's going to be a, a puppet and he's going to come in and maybe read the mail. Yeah. That frown, he's going to turn to a frown yeah, or, he's got so much work to do. Or maybe you'll print one out and he'll come up. Anyway. Okay. Um, so uh, this one is I'm out here in Cali for training for a job. Um, I decided my MP3 player was not working, so I thought to myself, um, I need to airdrop some toys for the next three days in a hotel room, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, uh, within 24 hours, I had my order. I'm soldering in a hotel room. Thank you so much, Adafruit. Yay. Mailbag. We do this every week. It says no smoking, but it doesn't say no soldering. <laughs> doesn't okay, say no time soldering. travel Tuesday. All right, we're going to keep moving. Time travel Tuesday, a couple things in the world of making. 2010, everyone started making these Abraham Lincoln um, PCBs. This is what? Four score and seven boards ago. I missed this. <laughs> yeah, this, you can make this on your machine. Um, back in 1878, um, saccharin. <laughs> it's a coal tar, but it's saccharin. So if you like sweet, tasty stuff in pink packets, saccharin. 1897, been around for a while. All right, next up, uh, 1864, Rebecca Lee Krupler was the first African-American female to become a doctor, uh, March 1st, 1864. Next up, 1852, Corn Flakes, that's right. Founder of Kellogg's, February 26, 1862. Early product, low fat, uh, low calorie diets at the time, a little bizarre. Um, that's where they came from. All right, we're gonna keep moving. Next up, news in the world of open source hardware. Um, you like open source hardware, right? right? You, you like it. Um, I got a garage full of it. You've got a garage full of it, uh, and you, uh, uh, have you heard of Tindy? Have you ever seen the Tindy site? No. Ah, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you about Tindy. So Tindy is really interesting. Um, it is, uh, it, it's kind of like Kickstarter, and it's also kind of like Etsy, all in one. So you can use it to fundraise for hardware. In fact, you could put. Okay. The milk bot on there. Ooh. I don't want to call it milk bot, but <laughs> you can put the you can put the other fab hey, on there. Kind of you, over. You might have. Uh, yeah, I know it's ruined now. It's yeah, uh, it's ruined now. This how things start. But um, you should check out Tindy. Um, they're doing a really good job. They have you can just put your stuff up, kind of like an Etsy, but you can also uh, use it as a fundraising source, which is very focused. It's not just um, uh, things like Kickstarter, which is you know yeah. big huge projects that are ten million dollars. And this is great, people people sometimes come to us and they're like, well, I have this product and then we want you to sell it. We're like, well. You know, we don't know if the market's really big or maybe it's like yeah. really complicated. Oh. You know, check out Tindy. You can maybe sell oh. there and try it out and yeah. then maybe work on revising or whatever. And then, you know, it could be a, a really cool uh, product to keep so carry. So Tindy.com, T-I-N-D-I-E.com. Okay, next up. Uh, kind of uh, big news in the world of documentation. So make projects. Um, according to Dazuki, is going to migrate away from something or shut down. Yeah. But uh, Dazuki, who fueled the make project site, 
has decided to let anyone use the Dazuki site, which is iFixit, which is Make Projects, um, to make to host their own open source. Uh, if it's open source hardware or software, you can host it on Dazuki for free. Mm -hmm. um, I would say besides learn.adafruit.com, Dazuki has the best. Um, mm -hmm learning tutorial system that anyone can publish stuff up to. Yeah. I like me some Instructables, but I like the clean interface of Dazuki. Dazuki well. does have a, a cool interface. There's room for many. There's yeah. room for many. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can never have enough documentation. All right, yeah. stuff <laughs> in the Adafruit learning system this week. Yeah, I will do, I'll do it. Lady Adafruit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay, um, so we've been porting over some of our uh, tutorials, and it's also really great because the people who haven't seen them are seeing them. So. Um, this week we did our maker business and manufacturing um, software. Very handy. Yeah, I know. Very handy. Fifteen tutorials in one. We cover yeah. all the stuff like tips for QuickBooks and syncing files and what payroll software we suggest and faxing services yeah. and how to get free packaging stuff from the postal office. People said we are pickups. crazy for giving away all these business secrets, Lady Ada. We're crazy. Well, this if, if this is the problem, then uh, well, I mean, I, but but let me tell, let me just give you a Lady a, Ada's crazy yeah. business plan. Yeah, let me just. I think that this is the thing is that like, there's so many things that are hard about running a company that figuring out how to like send and receive faxes should not be like what you spend your time yeah. on. Which is the best payroll service? Everyone who runs a payroll service will completely rip you off and tell you theirs is. So one of the things that I like, and I'll just give you an example. So here's why we do this. So Mike might go back and he might read all this stuff. He may spin off a company. He may do all this stuff. And you know what we get in the end? We get to resell his stuff. We get a, a milk right? lot. <laughs> but if there's no resources and he can't figure out all this stuff and it's just awful and there's... And this is the hardest stuff too. Like how to a avoid the stupid QuickBooks like 3,000 item limit thing. Yeah. Like nobody tells you about how QuickBooks like, has like... Having, an idea, list having the idea is like, eh, that's kind of hard. Nah, not really. Like making the thing, ah, oh, that's kind of hard. No, not yeah. really. Like getting it into a customer's hands. Oh really my hard. God. Very so uh, a lot of my tips and tricks, especially for something like how to, how to for example, um, PayPal, uh, you know, you get better rates the more you sell, but you have to apply for those rates. They don't give them to you by default. So I feel like, you know, I have a hint, like, don't forget, here's who you email to get the better rates because it's not automatic. And like how to do auto sweep, which they hide. Yeah. In fact, I think we gave SparkFun the, the auto sweep pro tip. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, like the, uh, the problem is they, they keep the money in the account. Yeah. There's a study where they'll take the money every single day at midnight and move it to your um, savings account. Yeah. Automatically for you, so you don't have to do that. Hmm. But yeah. like nobody knows about it because it's like this like weird you hidden have to thing, ask. and yeah. you have to like call up and talk to a person on the phone, and then they activate the possibility of finding it in like three menus in, and then you turn yeah. it on. Here's a business pro tip. Um, Internet companies are all every they're all about being online, except for when you get something. You have to call on the phone, like send a letter and send a fax. Like all of a sudden they get old real fast. They're like, yeah, yeah. we can't oh, do that you, online. You to, like, send it to, like, a so, notarized no, no, fax. No, only by horseback. Yeah. That's the only way yeah. we anyway, accept check it. it out. We got, send like, your 15, falcon to us. Fifteen mini tutorials is great. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, some war, uh, news in the world of Arduino. Lady Ada. Uh, you and Kevin talked about this Actually, a while ago. Kevin. No, no, you and Kevin talked about this a long time ago, yeah. and I thought this was such a neat idea. And K Town just deployed this. What is this? This is actually really interesting. So when we do all of our displays and no TFTs and graphics stuff, we have an Adafruit graphics sub library that kind of handles all of the like graphics stuff, like how to print in like a square or an oval or a round rack. And what we do is is we can then subclass that basic class for all our displays. So all of our displays have the same abilities to print text and bold and large and small, whatever, without having to rewrite the code over and over again because like it's C plus plus and like you know that's the whole point, right? So um, Kevin was actually looking at some Android code and, and saw, or sorry, K Town was looking at this Android code and saw they actually have an interesting subclass for sensor data where they have generalized sensor data so it's normalized to like the SI units. So right now, if you get an accelerometer and like you use like almost any accelerometer library for Arduino, it'll give you like value zero through 500 or whatever. It's like your acceleration is 500. And you're like, what does that mean? And you have to convert it to G's, and that's actually um, complicated meters per second. So what he did is he made a structure, and he's, he's been porting over some of the libraries. So like when you use our um, gyroscope, for example, it'll actually give you like radians per second or whatever. And if you use um, our magnetic sensor, uh, uh, um, uh, magnetometer, it'll actually give you like micro Teslas and stuff. So you'll actually get like normalized real data so that if you change sensors, you're not like ch doing weird like units hacking. It's actually all normalized to the same units. Much easier to compare. Um, unit scalar. Yeah, basically unit scalar, but also it's like a structure. So you, it, it, you know, the event, you use an event um, subclass. So it's really cool. It's really interesting. We'll be hopefully adapting most of our sensor libraries and all our new ones to this um, powerful 
a system which I think will make it easier for people to swap out sensors, use different sensors without like the nightmare of like everything has different units. Okay. Uh, there's more more learn Arduino tutorials from Dr. Monk. Yeah, we have the largest collection of Arduino tutorials online from this is like number Dr. Monk and Lady Ada. Uh, what is this one? This one is uh, really interesting. So I wanted to do a tutorial with a PIR sensor, but instead of making it just a boring like PIR sensor tutorial, I said, hey. Let's make this so like when the PIR sensor goes off, it sends you email. And so we showed how to install Python and then how to send messages through the serial port back and forth between Arduino and Python. So you can have your computer do something based on sensor inputs. This is a really good tutorial, yeah. sort of tying together the computer stuff with the sensor stuff. So um, here's our Arduino section. It is massive. If you don't know anything about Arduino or you just want to get good at it, um, this is the section. It's too big for one screen. We don't have big enough screens in the Not world yet. Not big enough. Uh, but here's the lesson. Well, we also released Lesson Zero. Yeah, we have Lesson Zero, which is getting started with Arduino. We have all about Arduino libraries, which is the most asked question, all the way up to Lesson 17. Uh, this is 16 here. It is getting massive. Next up. Uh, Next up, we've updated our little tutorial on how to use your um, laser cutter, which everybody has like hanging this. around, to make your own solder yeah. stencils. Um, until. Other fab could maybe cut out a little. When we st yeah. when yeah st yeah. when we started out um, with doing surface mount stuff, we actually uh, laser etched our own stencil. So this is like accelerometer stencil, and um, you know it's not great, but it was it, you know I'd had to place accelerometers and then and, and toast them in the toaster oven um, using a thermocouple feedback, and it you know it's not great, but it, it is fast and I can do very quick revisions. So um, you know maybe if you're cutting out like your surface mount stuff, then you could also uh, laser engrave. See what I use. Um, hmm? I actually use just plain old paper. You get really sharp edges. Yeah. I'm like using well, I need, to, yeah. I need to reuse it. This was like, you know, this stencil is actually, um, I use Kapton Mylar, and um, they would last like a couple hundred. Hmm. The paper ones only last for one board. Yeah. <clears throat> I've, I've done like hundreds of boards with them. Um, this is a tutorial I built Earl. It's actually a really handy tutorial. So a lot of people ask, like, I have multiple batteries, and I want to charge them using our charger, and I want like some sort of switch to do the auto magic thing. And especially if you're taking two battery packs and then you want to charge them separately, but then combine them into a seven volt pack. So we did a, a nice write up showing like three or four ways that you could do this yeah. safely so you um, don't damage um, your LiPo charger or your batteries. All right. Um, next this is up. This a big tutorial week. Yeah. We released more tutorials in like one day than maybe like last year we would it all, all month. Yeah. It It is tutorial central here. Anyways. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, so uh, we're up to Wearable Wednesday. Um, this is uh, our uh, weekly feature that we do. Um, you probably tuned into this because we have all the cool. I like wearables. Yeah, wearable I'm Wednesday. I'm wearing them right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's on your floor. Oh, uh, battery died. Okay. Left it on. All right. Well, so, let's um, just pretend it's on. This is uh, th this project. We're gonna just show the first part of it because um, we're tight on time tonight. Uh, we're gonna show Becky's video that she did with Colin. Also, James and Andy and Phil were involved. This is. Fantastic. This is a big Star group, studded. Big group effort. We did a preview of this last year. Uh, sorry, last show. <laughs> last year. It felt like a year ago. Last show. Um, this is Colin. And uh, Colin. photo by John Janeer. And uh, this is the Ampli-Tie. It's a uh, tie with a V-meter. I'm going to show it in a minute. Okay, um, but here is the video. So I just want to start showing just a, a couple minutes of it. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Welcome to Wearable Wednesday, everybody. Today we're making another fun Flora project. It's this volume meter tie. It uses the Flora RGB NeoPixels and our Adafruit microphone amplifier breakout to be reactive to sound. hard to tie this tie once it's full of electronics, so we're using this police uniform issue breakaway tie with Velcro at the back, and the knot is already pre-tied for us. Use Taylor's chalk to draw a line straight down the center of the tie and space out your 16 pixels evenly. Also use Taylor's chalk to mark the location of each pixel. The connections to the pixels will be made with conductive thread, and you can start with one of the ground pads, which will connect to the negative bus on the pixels. Conductive thread is easy to work with if you've watched our conductive thread tips video, so go ahead and do that now. I'll still be here when you get back. As you learned, the best way to finish off a knot with conductive thread is with a little bit of clear nail polish. 
stitch over to the ground pad on your first pixel. It's marked with a little minus sign. And then stitch many times around the pad to form a secure mechanical and electrical connection before then stitching over to another ground. Okay, so um, watch the rest of the video. So you can see the whole thing. Um, as you can see, like this is why I'm wearing a jacket. Well, I've been wearing a jacket lately. Hello, Phil. Yeah. How are you? I turned down the lights a little bit, but uh, I'll be wearing this uh, for the rest of the night. We're gonna go out tonight. Yeah. Uh, no. Party time. Yeah. And so uh, this is actually, I think, one of the best uh, Flora projects because it combines all sorts of different things. It's portable. It's portable. Which I like. Yeah. And I have to say, I think wearable projects, unfortunately, um, were. Um, they were very gender specific. There were a lot of projects that you normally would just associate with uh, girls doing. And there really wasn't, um, uh, a, I, I think, uh, projects until recently, until Flora came along, that span. Now there's you know, guys and girls doing a lot of stuff. Boys you have to so too. Yeah. Uh, um, it is one of those things where it's like we want to involve everyone. And this is something that's like, this is really cool. This is, this is fun. And it can go on all sorts of other things. It could be adapted for a dress. It could be adapted on to a hat. It could be adapted yeah. onto anything. Um, you, uh, you know, you and I could walk around Soho, and no one would even notice that we have these things because it looks decorative almost, but it's also very functional. Um, so we have a, a neat, um, a neat uh, uh, project that uses the floor with a GPS as well. All right. So okay, let's keep moving. Um, I take you seriously with this glowing thing on your. What? Head. You don't take me seriously even without the glowing. Oh, that's so. right. But now you can tell he's talking. Yeah. Um, so next up, 3D Thursday. I only have one thing, but it's the only thing that matters. 3D Thursday is an official hit, and there's two reasons. Number one, um, someone printed this out. <laughs> so it's 3D Thursday. The other one, Make has a 3D Thursday. Yeah. 3D Thursday and taking I want, over. Actually, I want everyone to have a 3D Thursday. Everybody's everyone's going to get... Everyone's gonna get it. Like the internet just turned into like 3D Thursday. Yeah. So we have... Um, and Gadget and Tech Crunch. So we have Pi Day. Um, and make us Family Friday. I'm not going to go to Family Friday, but make, <laughs> make, make, make's going to keep Family Friday. Maybe we need to start a Machining Monday. Yeah, Machining Monday. Let's, listen to this now. Let's talk. Um, right. But uh, anyways, it's a real it's a real thing. Once it, once, how do you know 3D Thursday is a real thing? Because someone printed it out. All right, next up, Pi Day. Remember that I was just talking about that? that yeah, that was, that, was fun. that was fun. And it comes once a year? Yeah. Right, so this well, week... Um, Pi Day is every Friday here at Adafruit. We had um, a birthday party. Uh, TechCrunch came by with John Biggs, and we had Liz and Evan. They were here this week. Yay! We hung out with Liz and Evan. Um, they're awesome. And they were had some meetings. And they came by, and they uh, were in the office for, for two days and, and worked yeah. out of here. And we also had a, a little video with TechCrunch. Do uh, check it out. Maybe someone can post it in the chat. Yeah. It's a long, so we can't show it. But uh, we show it from Model A. Here is a pie cake. Pie cake. Yeah. So <laughs> it's for, really big, actually. I think it's like three feet by two feet. It's like a really big cake. cake. Yeah. And you can tell it's made in the UK because it's got the blue uh, on your jacket. That's how you can tell. Um, just for the folks who um, are watching the show and normally keep track, we will be going a couple minutes over this week. Um, here's code, when you're pie. As someone pointed, as someone pointed out in the chat, um, they saved $38 and they got a free pie. And I think they got free UPS ground shipping. I don't know how good of a deal it is uh, for us that we're doing this. Yeah. But I'm just going to, crazy lady, <laughs> crazy lady, everything must go. So um, let's uh, uh, go to new product time. Okay. Also called uh, where some people uh, do some great shopping. Yeah. And some great discounts. All right, Lady Ada, it's new product time. First okay. up. We oh, got we got more Open Beam. We now have um, the Open Beam. We have we have the starter pack. We have the machinist kits, and then we realize like, oh wait, we also have these like advanced non-machinist. But still, like very complete kits. They come with like tons of L brackets, T brackets, tons of stuff, and they're like 150 bucks. These are really great. You can like build like a milk bot with uh, this much stuff. So do check it out. Um, we love extrusion. We think it's a really great way to to easily build stuff when you don't necessarily have um, you know a water jet or a laser cutter because you can hacksaw it. Yeah, I kind of like how the tie kind of talk. You can kind of hear you, mm -hmm. but it's pretty. The the sensitivity is nice. Look at this. Anyways. Uh, next up, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, I know. Hold on. Actually, can you skip this one? Because I have to. Well, I just turned it on. I have to. Uh, okay. To set it up. We're let's, gonna skip let's go, this go, one. We'll go back. All right. to this, one. this one's mine then. Okay, and, do this one. Yeah. So um, BeagleBone is going to release a new board. It's going to be a, a, a lower cost board. Mm -hmm. um, the BeagleBone has been fantastic. We have the, some of the best tutorials. Some great accessories. Um, you can sign up for it. It also not, adds HDMI. It adds and HDMI. And has onboard flash. Onboard yeah. flash. Um, it's gonna, familiar. it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be priced great, and uh, yes. it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit more than Raspberry Pi, 
But less. But it's going to be less than some other things that are out there that are kind of Linuxy that people are doing. It's also <laughs> anyway. also available in Adafruit Black, as you can tell. That's our company color. Yeah. Okay, so we can go back to the uh, the Wi-Fi now. All right, so let's go back to this thing. Okay. So um, yeah, this is a Wi-Fi microscope, and this is a really weird thing, and so I actually have to describe it. It's a microscope, um, and I'm only, it's wireless, but not only is it wireless, but it's Wi-Fi. And there's a lot of wireless microscopes that are a lot less expensive, but they need a USB dongle. This actually has an access point inside of it, and so you can connect to it, and then use a net camera viewer. These are like used for any kind of security camera systems, it's a very common protocol. Um, and so you can use an iPad or an Android device. You can use a computer, of course, but what's cool is that you can use an iOS device without any additional hardware or special software. You just use a, a standard that can be your... So um, maybe on the overhead, yeah, I going, can... We're going to the overhead. Live demo. So yeah, so for example... I'm maybe we can look at Mike's um, project over there. Uh, well, I want to show something that's like fine pitch. So okay. this is like, um, I can inspect a... Uh, and this is an iPad mini. Yeah. And uh, let me see if I can focus in on it. Yeah, so I can focus in... Well, it's kind of hard to do both at the same time, and also the... Yeah, we have a webcam and two cams, and then a wireless <laughs> webcam. Yeah, I'm trying to get it so it's not... Hey, like, lady, I heard like, you like cams. So. I know. Yeah, I can't really do cam that. Cam while you cam while you cam. Uh, like but, yeah, maybe you, maybe you can hold that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can you can see... It's actually a really uh, good quality camera. It's it's 640 by 480 but it's good quality. We really liked it. Um, it's kind of the only solution we've ever seen where if you want to do some sort of optical inspection, and you don't have like a way to plug something in because you're using a tablet or a phone, you can use this with your Android phone or your you know, Apple phone or whatever kind of phone as long as there's um, an available uh, camera viewer and like every single phone these days has an IP camera viewer because um, so many security systems use IP cameras. Yeah. So it's really cool. It has some LEDs to light up your work. Um, it has this removable thing. You can change the magnification and uh, there's an on-off switch over here too. Maybe. So um, check it out. Hopefully we'll uh, have a little demo video at some point. Yeah, works on Android, iOS. Works on everything, but we just show it iOS because iOS like is the hardest PC. thing to demo. All that stuff. Okay. And you, it's the software's free. Um, next up, Good Fets. Good Fets. Oh yeah, you know what? The photo's really good. So the Good Fet is um, um, by uh, Travis Goodspeed, and it's a really awesome MSP430 JTAG debugger. It's open source completely. He makes great stuff. The problem is, um, you, if you want one of these, you have to actually buy, get the PCBs and build them yourself. And we're like, well, like a lot of people wanted um, to have a good fit because they're doing uh, JTAG um, debugging or they're doing MSP430 work. And so we're like, hey, like let's get these fully assembled and ready to go. So you can actually pick one of these up. I think this is the only place right now you can get a fully assembled good fit. Um, assembled, tested, works great. Travis Goodspeed's a great guy. He designs awesome hardware. And yeah. this is a uh, version 4.2. And Travis Goodspeed, I was just recently told he's not a character in Eon Flux, um, but they both do electronics. News to me. He cool. should be a character in Eon Flux. News to me, but it's cool. I, li I liked it. I was like, oh my god, the guy from Eon Flux is making hardware for us? It's so cool. Anyways, let's keep going. Um, next up, yeah. we have uh, Socket more sockets. So we had TQFP sockets, and now we have um, SOIC sockets. So you can just go through this. This is the uh, TSOP socket. Um, this is a uh, fine pitch TSOP socket, just showing it off. We also have a big wide SOIC socket, and we also have a bunch of smaller SOIC sockets. And so the reason we have a whole Andy. range of them is because uh, for, the, um, for the SOIC sockets, these sockets can either fit narrow, medium, or wide. And the bodies of SOIC devices can be 150 mil, 200 mil, or 300 mil. Um, and so the sockets, the way they work, um, and I'll show it off because it's kind of interesting. Um, you actually, um, let's see if I can get in here. So you actually push down to remove the chip, and there are these little um, legs. You can kind of see it. Kind of looks like a face hugger, and um, they grab the legs, and so that ha the body has to match the size of the socket. So this is like a, I think the narrow socket. So the mm -hmm. the gold um, fingers grab the legs, and it works quite well. So we have one for SOIC. Oh yeah, go for it. Um, this one is a is SOP, TSOP, and um, it, it's a 28 TSOP, but you can put a smaller chip in it as long, or fewer pins, as long as the body size, uh, body width matches. So, um, and this is the wide SOIC one, and this one uh, is is kind of big, so it uses this latching system to latch and grab on, and then it converts it to uh, just breadboard. Yeah. 
Super handy. Handy if you're um, doing If you do, product. yeah, if you're, we, we, a lot of times we get products that we like and we use. And, yeah, I use these. And, and They're great for is, testing out chips without soldering to them. Um, you can also use them to program chips before they're soldered on. Um, if you don't yeah. have like programming headers on your chip, um, they're just really, really handy. And uh, I'm glad we have them. Yeah. And you know what I really like? Uh, my check out our like gothy electronic photos. Like, just look at this. Just nice look at black it. background. Isn't this nice? Yeah. yeah. Electronics should be um, beautifully shot. Look at these photos that John Janeer is doing. Look at yeah. this. You remember this bespoke like detailed capacitors I made with yeah. you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is how electronics are supposed to look. Look mm. at like the reflection and everything. Tasty. Yeah. Anyways. And you I, can see the printing on the uh, the chips, which is hard to do. You have to like, you can't have your yeah. light be too direct. Okay. We got the tips. Um, yeah, we have another um, Hacko tip. Um, this tip is a screwdriver tip. It's 2.4 millimeters, not 1.6. Great for like really big heat sinks when you have a lot of stuff you want to heat up. They have a lot of thermal mass. Might be handy right. for you. Next up, uh, we're debuting a product. It's tonight's just a massive night. Yeah, I know. Yeah. here. Um, they're not quite ready to have them in the store. We're waiting on a couple parts, but we did want to have yeah. um, a place for people to sign up so we know how many to make for our first run. Yeah. If people wanted 10 or 50 or whatever. That's a quick video. Let us watch a quick video. Here's a new spin on Adafruit's Internet of Things printer. The new printer uses Wi-Fi. You don't need a cable to connect to the internet or to program it. Under the hood, there's our very Pi, opening the door to all kinds of new abilities. The software is already Python, so you can leverage a lot of existing libraries. You can find code for parsing XML or JSON data, for instance. It also ties into the Python imaging library, so you can do real graphics and typography. You're no longer limited to blocky computer text. Can't wait to see what you do with it. So, uh, have one here live, I can show off real fast. Yeah. Show this off. Um, it's uh, my demo, and it's um, it prints out. These are all the Adafruit tweets that it, it's lately. And when you press the button, unless something terrible happened, it should um, print out the current weather forecast for you. That's what you wanted. You, you just wanted to have it with you so you could put it in your kit <laughs> and uh, and have it for the oh, day. Oh no, it's being flaky. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll probably print out in a second. This is okay. Oh, yeah, it's a little slow. Um, and inside is a Raspberry Pi. And um, we have um, the thermal printer inside, and then um, a button and a uh, DC jack. And it uses a really big DC power supply, so there's only one plug in the back if you wanted it. So it from both. Uh -huh. I'll turn it off. Yeah, because we're gonna use that for something else later. So yeah, when you when you turn it off, it, it yeah maybe a goodbye turn it, yeah look at that. Isn't that super cute. Goodbye. All right, so why don't you, uh, uh, we'll turn it on again in a second. Yeah, I'll turn it on. Okay, so um, so that was uh, new products. Whew, what a marathon. New products. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going to. Um, More ties. Yeah. Uh, what do we think the price is going to be on this? It uh, includes everything. Oh, it's on the site. It's on the site. Yeah, Sign it's like $108. Okay. Comes with Raspberry Pi, though. All right, um, we're going to do just a little bit of uh, uh, regular questions. It's a good time for questions for Mike because he's visiting. Yeah, Mike says, and you can ask any questions about the other fab and some wearable electronics and some quadcopters and all this stuff. Um, don't forget, code is when you're by. Okay, and more if you can crank that up again. I can yeah, I will. I'm going to. Trivia when you let me know. All okay. right, so uh, was Mike's address Mike at otherlab.com? Yes, uh, yes. Mike at otherlab.com. Our small company. We still get to use just the first name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we have like two Johns here, so we have John is John <laughs> Yeah. What do you use to do the live camera control on the show? Um, I use Ustream Producer Studio, and we have a uh, live streaming gift guide <laughs> from December. Yeah, no one's ever had one of those before on our site. Um, next up, can the tie be created using clip-on tie? Yes. It is a, it's a Velcro tie. Best way to reverse engineer an RC car. Mm, what part? Yeah, what part is right? Yeah, it's, there's a lot of Okay, has anyone made Internet of Things printer with a standard dot matrix printer from the 90s? You could. I 
mean, if it has a serial input, it makes it even easier because it's just TTL serial output. So I would get like a like a TTL printer. And yeah, you can you can have a gigantic. We just it's just hard to ship those around. So we decided the kit would include a smaller thermal printer. What do you think of the Printbot LC for a first-time 3D printer user? Ooh. Have you played around with one of these? Mm, what's the question? The little. Uh, what do you think of the little uh, Printbot LCs? Have you seen these? No, They're the low-cost printers. Yeah, I I would say basically. Um, you get what you pay for with these things. So um, make sure you look at all the different reviews. The best place to look is Make Has a 3D Printing Guide. It's the best, most comprehensive guide altogether. It's printed. Okay, great. Uh, next up. Um, I've heard that 900 nanometer range R LEDs aren't good for night vision and 800 nanometer ones are. Will you guys stock a 25 pack of 850 nanometer? Um, well, the receivers we have, and most of the stuff we do is 940 nanometers, so probably going to stick with that for now. Okay. Other lab is a uh, blank page. That I think there's a flash intro. Uh, maybe isn't that true? Mm, it's on. Yeah. Hopefully it's not down. Yeah. Maybe. Sometimes it's flaky. The Adafruit uh, audience of crashed the site. Um, question for Mike: What's the best way to stabilize quadcopters in urban environments with crosswinds? I Downward know facing is... camera. You need a hard yeah. reference point if you want to stabilize against the ground. Okay. Uh, and then would they use visual recognition? To you have to use, yeah, use an optical flow or like a vision algorithm. All right, we're going to um, do a uh, trivia question. I'm not, I'm not completely sure it's going to work. Okay. Well, um, we're going to try an experiment with a trivia question now. You don't want me to do that? I mean, it might. I, I, just don't, I just don't know. Okay. Um, we're going to do a trivia question. The prize is a Raspberry Pi. Yes, because it's the one year anniversary. Because it's the one year anniversary. Um, here's how we're going to try this. Oh, look, somebody says hello, Lady Ada and IoT printer. Yeah, uh, here's how we're going to do it. Um, the first tweet we see out of this printer starting now um, has to have an at symbol. Has to have at Ada Fruit gets the prize. Just make sure you haven't won a prize in the past, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll wait here. Um, Bailey, you have to be on Bailey Twitter. doesn't count because we didn't ask before he tweeted. Yeah, you have to um, be on Twitter, and you have to just say something to at at Ada Fruit. At and, um, and then a message or something. As soon as we see it, um, and it works. And it oh, works. <laughs> yeah, we might be out of range from the, the from the wireless. Well, it did work, but I just I just was assuming that there had been more tweets, but maybe there weren't any. Yeah. It was like printing the same three over and over again. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, I'll just hop on Twitter and I'll see which one uh, okay. came up. But um, we'll see. Oh, oh, wait, oh, 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 bread bike, you please are the winner. Bread bike, you please are the winner. Yeah, um, bread bike. Is there a bread bike? Hopefully. Bread bike? Oh man, here it comes. Uh -oh. <laughs> How long is that roll? Unfortunately, there's a lot of people. But, um, yeah. but bread so, bike was the first at 408.32. Yeah. Someone, oh, point, time someone pointed out it could just be some random person tweeting us or something <laughs> like that. That's true. Yeah. Oh, Let's try to check that they're in, in the. Uh, that they're actually there. Okay. Uh, a Mac Mini 1. Um, Oh, he's bread bike. Okay, great. Okay. He or she is bread bike. All, All right. right. Unfortunately, the purple does. A, a spam win. bot wins a pie. That'd be funny if we're getting <laughs> spammed. All right. Thanks. Oh, you want to show the person offering us a free iPad? Want to um, change to the overhead, and then maybe people can tweet and they can. Watch yeah. It. Um, if you tweet now, you can also see your tweets come out of here. So. Meta. Dini printer. Yeah, we should have the printer tweet when it receives a tweet. Tweet loops. <laughs> yeah. Tweet, tweet, and then we can put it on. Just a Mobius this. strip? Yeah, we could have it print over and over. And okay. Then, uh, I think if you press the button, it's supposed to print the weather, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure. All right, let me see. Oh, okay, that's working. The only problem is that the time is set for if, it, if it's in London. But the weather's correct, so yeah. it's 31 degrees. Oh, man, it is not the best in London right now. No, 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 the time is in, the time <laughs> is London, because you know, you have to set the... Um, I was going to say, it's really hot in London if it's 31 yeah. C. <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually interesting. We actually had, we had, we should make sure that you can set it to uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit because right now I mean I'm like I'm American, so I'm just making Fahrenheit. I'm joking. But um, you're, you, the, when the pie is British, it shows up. It has mm -hmm. the um, the the time zone set to London or Cambridge. Okay. Thanks for your messages, everybody. All right. This is fantastic. Is it possible? Okay. Neat. Um, all right. Okay. So. Um, Thanks for hanging in there. We said we'd go 10 minutes over because we had a lot of stuff going. Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank this you is for awesome. having me. Uh, I can't wait to have my own other fab in the future. It will be wonderful. And uh, uh, thanks for showing all these demos and also for doing some cool stuff with Flora. It's really made the, uh, the platform sparkle, as they say. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, MOSFET's not in the factory, but we do show a picture of MOSFET. Yeah. <laughs> now it's the internet. There are cats. Yeah, the internet was made for cats. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Paint Your Dragon. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, George. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone, in the nice show and tell. Special. That was a fantastic show and tell. Uh, thank you so much, for Mike, again, for showing us all and the stuff. And the chocolate. And for the chocolate. And uh, all the demos worked out. We had complicated demos. We had Wi-Fi microscopes. Print box, one, one of a kind machines. One of a kind. Yeah, this is a, a one of a kind machine. We have a um, uh, printing uh, pie printer. Mm -hmm. We had Tesla coils. All those demos that people showed in the show. Yeah. Account. Well, the other thing that didn't work was the robot. The microphone for the robot. There must be some type of cosmic event. Everyone, quick, go to a conference and show your product. Quick. I know. <laughs> to the, <laughs> until, on stage. until midnight. This is the last night. Yes. Yeah. It's like the one blessed day when like there's like no like sun flares or whatever. Yeah. With okay. that, here is. And that tie worked. And the tie worked. Yeah, look at that. Do 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 do. <laughs> All right. Speak into my tie. Hello. <laughs> With that, here is your moment of Zener. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know we do this every time. No. We do this every time. <laughs>